Welcome everyone to the new fly fisher. In today's show, we learn still water fly fishing techniques from Phil Raleigh. He'll explain everything from rod positions to how to set your strike indicator. It's going to be a fascinating show. Stay with us. Today we're still water fly fishing on one of the most beautiful lakes in the world. Fortress Lake is located in British Columbia just north of Golden and is surrounded by majestic mountains and glaciers. Many years ago, rangers from Jasper National Park dumped coaster brook trout into this lake. Over time, they have grown to epic sizes and thanks to the fact this lake is so isolated, they've been preserved. Today you can fly into Fortress Lake to enjoy both the incredible natural beauty and superb trout fishing. I was privileged to spend several days with Phil Rowley at Fortress Lake where he taught me some excellent still water techniques. Phil is the author of the best-selling book, Fly Patterns for Still Waters, and has written numerous articles for magazines throughout North America. Doing here calling and just covering water. We got the boat idling and we're just part of the anchor, we're trying to cover water. We're not trolling rather, we're casting still and just drifting with the wind and using a very, very slow hand twist retrieve because these fish are just not active like they were, oh, where they, they were, the way they were yesterday. With that slow hand twist retrieve, we've been getting grabs and takes all the way along, but that fly has to be slow. We have bad weather and cool water temperatures. They're just not chasing them actively. So you gotta really feed them slow and let them find them and let their natural aggressive nature take over. Christen this a dazzle leech, and it's just basically uh, dubbing for a tail, and then uh, long strand mohair style dubbing in a dubbing loop, and then brushed and combed shape. What we're going to do is now set the indicator. So that one last fish was at 10 feet. So there's two, four, six, eight, and ten. And then we just slide our indicator arrangement back down to this level. Okay, and with these quick release indicators, I simply pinch the bobber and the indicator, the uh, sorry, the indicator and the line, push on it, causes that to double, gently pinch that in. And when the fish strikes, as that last one did, releases and the indicator doesn't become a negative factor in the landing of the fish. We're all set to go. We're going to throw it right back in amongst those timbers where we've got brookies cruising in and out. We'll be able to fish this fly successfully without it hanging up. One of the most critical things we have to consider in still water fly fishing is depth. What, generally, what, a, what a general rule is, is fish are selective on their depth and opportunistic upon what they feed upon. In other words, they're going to feed upon whatever is most readily available at the depth they're cruising at. And this is where these strike indicators really come in handy. Now what I've done here is I've approximately set it up for about 12 feet between the indicator and the fly. But there are times when fish are so selective on their depth that we have to set this in a more surgical approach. And how we do that is I've approximately set my indicator again at that 12 feet increment. Okay, and I'm gonna strip in my fly, grab it gently so I don't hook myself tail all straightened out and I'm going to attach a weight. It can be a bell sinker, a slinky, or in this case, fly fisherman's tool, the hemostat, attached to the fly and I'm going to lower it gently over the side and it will pull the indicator underneath. And the distance that the indicator is pulled under between the indicator and the surface, the reciprocal of that will be how high the fly suspends off the bottom. Now in this case, I'm probably a bit too long on my lead, as I only have this distance between the surface and the fly, and the indicator rather. So what I'm going to do is readjust 
I want to be in, in this situation I feel about two feet off the bottom and set the indicator big loop there so I'm going to readjust that just set the indicator put it into place lower it again and I'm more comfortable with that setup so I have about 24 inches or so between the indicator and the surface and when that fly is cast my fly will be surgically figured out as to how much I have to put it off the bottom. And this is a great way, especially when coronamid fishing, the most popular method for using strike indicators. Um, they can be fished six inches when the hatch is strong. Six inches will be the uh, difference sometimes because the fish will just, it's so efficient to feed at that one level, they won't rise a foot either way. Um, oh, sorry, uh, they won't rise a foot in either direction to take the fly. So it's an excellent method for really dialing in how deep your fly is fishing. Provided, of course, you're on a flat shoal. This is not something you'd probably want to do off a drop-off because of that angled taper into deeper water. Whoa! Not gonna force this guy in too much yet. This, Phil, is a huge fish. This is a six or seven pounder. You know that. Look at it. And now we know where the net will hold him. <laughs> look at the size of that. Fish. Oh, look at the back. This guy hasn't missed too many dinner bells. No. Look at the same guy flying I have. And that's the size of a small lake trout. Yeah. Hands around it. Let me get the fly out first. Ow! They got teeth. <laughs> Look at that. Just hammered it. He's got it right in the bony part of his mouth. You want my forceps? Nope, he's out. How big do you think that fish is? Oh, oh he's at least, at least four, I would say. Just because of the rookies don't get that long. <laughs> no. These fish are camera shy. Perfect, mm -hmm. right in the money hole. Mm -hmm. What we're going to do is let that leech settle down. It's that little ripple. That leech is underneath that indicator right now, bobbing around, and I'm just keeping an eye on that indicator. And if it pulls under in any way or draws right or left or like that, <laughs> miss them. An eye on that indicator. All I'm doing is I'm just dripping it in. There we go. Fish on. See that slowly draw under? That indicator has released itself. And this is a great method for, uh, you know, and obviously suspending a fly above the bottom, but. Uh, if you've got members in your party that aren't proficient casters, you can place that fly out there for them and just tell them to watch the, uh, the indicator when it pulls up, draws under, just lift the hook and battles on. Great for kids, great for kids introducing them to fly fishing. strike indicator take right in the upper nose. I'll go back to Justin's Fortress Lake buddies. Give that a few more tries. So again we'll reset it up to four. Trip some fly line over. 
six, eight, ten. Open up, push. Just snug, but not too firm, so she will release. We'll be back at it. Colin, we decided to change plans here. We're fishing a, a relatively flat area, consistent depth. It's about 12 feet deep. And one technique that's really taken off in popularity in recent years is using uh, indicators for things other than what is traditionally associated with still waters, and that's coronament fishing. And we're just simply going to hang a leech, and I've got a variation of an egg sucking leech here with an orange cone head. And I'm going to suspend this using an indicator about 10 feet um, uh, between the indicator and the fly. So it suspends about two feet off the bottom. I'm going to make a cast, let it settle. I'm just going to bring the fly in with a series of six to 12 inch pulls that sort of bring that leech up. And as I let go, it'll flutter deck down to the bottom. Very natural action. Lots of life in this marabou tail here. And uh, we've already tried it once, and I, I think it'll. I think it'll work here with these fish suspended like they are in here. Um, a very slow presentation. It'll keep you out of trouble, all that timber and debris lying on the bottom. So I'll just set the indicator here, as I said before, about 10 feet, so we're about two feet off the bottom. Um, these are a new uh, indicator, a quick release indicator. And for years, the problem of indicator fishing with more than, say, 12 feet bec between the indicator and the fly is, OK, I've hooked a fish, and now how do I remove the toothpick? Well, these simply work on the premise that the, the uh, tippet the leader is fed through the actual peg of the indicator, doubled back and forms a loop, and when the angler strikes to the fish pulling the indicator under, it releases and you're free to fight the fish unencumbered by an indicator. So they're really a neat little invention, simple as most good inventions seem to be, and just simply put them in, not too tightly, it'll certainly hold during the cast, and as soon as that big brookie grabs, we'll be free and clear to fight a fish on a leech under an indicator. wind drift that line to where we saw that rookie before. What we want to do is, without disturbing the indicator, is draw that line tight so if and when it pulls under, I don't lose the, the fish because I had too much slack in the system. So it goes tight and you just let that wind drift it. Beautiful. Just like said Colin, that uh, fly drifted through that spot where we picked three or four other brookies up. And almost on cue, it gets to sort of that magic spot. And under she went. Bad brookie. Spoiled here now. The average size of these fish is just incredible. No, keep him out of the anchor rope. <laughs> Sets, but not in a spot that's going to do the fish any harm. Oh, these are being invasive little guys. Just a beautiful char.
recuperate. A couple seconds once he realizes he can swim. Swim it back off. He certainly went up. I think he saw it and something about it he didn't like. In still water fly fishing, the retrieves are very simple. And frankly, you have two. You have a strip retrieve and a venerable hand twist retrieve. The strip retrieve is ideal for leeches, bait fish patterns, slow moving food sources such as scuds that sort of move along in a steady line and then pause and then move again. So it's just simply, once the cast is made, place the line under the thumb and forefinger of the rod hand, my right hand in this case, and I'm simply gonna make strips like this, and you can vary both the length of the strip and the time between the strips and the overall pace of the motion to imitate a wide range of food sources. For slower moving food sources, such as coronamids, scuds, damsels, mayfly nymphs, the hand twist retrieve is a valuable retrieve. It's a busy retrieve that allows anglers to move their hands and yet still not retrieve the fly too fast. And it's just simply a matter of gripping the line with the thumb and forefinger, rolling the hand around with the pinky, reaching back up and grabbing the fly line. It can be varied both in speed and by using lesser fingers, the first two, you can make even smaller retrieves of the fly. These are the two basic retrieves that can cover just about every situation you can encounter in fly fishing, whether it's Western British Columbia or North America. Oh, there we go. Fish on. See? Made the cast of the rise. Oh, he threw it. Nobody's following. So try that again. Quite often those situations where you see one fish rolling, he's just one of a group of 10 or perhaps 15 or 20 trout. You get your fly in there and uh, again, get that greed and competition working to your advantage with these leech patterns. Provide a big mouthful. Keep this nice steady six inch pulls, strip pause. Typically the grab comes right after I strip the fly. Fly stops and starts fall plummeting downwards, and it just can't be resisted. There we go. I don't know if you saw that, but there's a strip, and then right after that, the line just tightened. And we're going to fight this fish, keep our rod position low. Out investigating with these anchors trailing out the back. That's the way they should be, so we're fighting our fish. We keep everything in front. And lessen the risk of a fish running around the anchor rope and making a right mess of everything. Look at that. Never seen Brookie so bright. Whoa! So full of energy. Well, he's back at the lodge, said he might be fighting a bit lethargic. I don't think so. the way so if he thrashes around we don't accidentally re-hook him or worse hook ourselves and that is one beautiful fortress lake brookie 
colors in that. We have a drink. Off he goes. Another Fortress Brookie on here. And just a perfect blend of choosing our fly line to match the situations. We're over a, a, a rocky shoreline with lots of sunken wooden debris. Uh, perfect place for really all, all three things. We've got the comfort with the water temperature we're experiencing today, the protection, they can use the depth adjacent to this um, slide area, and the uh, in and out of the logs, and obviously the logs harbor large amounts of food. So we've put those together, and because we're in about 20 feet of water, we're using a full sinking line to get our fly down there and keep it there for as long as we can without hanging up until hopefully a Fortress Lake Brookie like this one grabs on. want to come in yet. There we go. And that barbless fly has once again worked its charms and as soon as its tension's off it's out which just allows us to quickly grab our brookie. Look at the colors on those. Just a magnificent little fish. And there he goes. So once again choose your areas carefully. Eliminate 90% of the water. Look for that 10% that holds 90% of the fish and match your fly line selection to those conditions, and you'll be successful on still waters everywhere. All right, we've got a nice brookie here. He's just rolling around down there in the typical dog style with these long shanked hooks. It's always a challenge. They can really use that leverage. One of the key things we've got to remember here is when we're fishing still waters is rod position. And that means when I'm fishing sinking lines like we are today, of keeping that rod low to the water. In fact, I've got the first four to six inches placed right into the water. So when that fish grabs, I'm on him right away. I have direct contact with the fly because so many of these food sources trout prey upon in still waters. They can just come up leisurely behind the food item, flare their gills, take it in just like a goldfish eating fish food and move on to the next prey item. So you've got to be quick and direct contact, low rod tip. Get the rewards like this beautiful fat brookie here. I'm just going to get the fly out of the net so it doesn't re hook itself accidentally in the fish or worse, me. <laughs> and just look at the silver coloration in this brookie. This is just a magnificent. Fortress Lake Brookie. So once again, keep that rod position low. You'll be quick to react to any takes you get. Stillwater fishing is an extremely relaxing and enjoyable aspect of this sport. If you follow some of the guidelines that Phil outlined in the show, you'll do much better the next time you venture out on a lake. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week. Thank you,